Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Have you realized that ever since Raila Moludinga expressed his interest in becoming the chairman of the African Union Commission, the government machinery has emerged with a lot of propaganda around his candidature. And what they are trying to do is using social media intimidation when I was here to work one of the things that they are saying is that if Raila succeeds in becoming uh, the chairman of the AU, then ODM will automatically scramble and there will be no more ODM. Even as we speak, some of the ODM supporters have swallowed this fear and there is a lot of unease within the ODM fraternity, including leaders. I want you to listen to what some of the ODM leaders from Nyanza were saying just to show you that they are trying to quell tempers and they are assuring people that there is nothing to worry about. To be very clear about this speculation and talks about Raina Mono Dinga expressing interest to become the chairman of African Union Commission. Raina's stature and position in Africa is well documented and known. He has the capacity, he has the competence to, be, to take up that leadership. But that does not affect the position of ODM. As a party, when Naira comes back from Germany, we are going to sit a central committee to make a, a pronouncement on the future of ODM. And I want to tell you, there is no cause for Allah. In ODM, our leader is Raila Odinga. He says right, we go right. He says left, we go left. Whether he's the chairman or not chairman, that should go out clearly. There is no panic. We have competence in ODM. Mesikia ya kwamba, baba yetu Raila Mwono Dinga. Amesema ya kwamba, ameonyesha interest ya kukua chairman ya African Union. Hiyo ni kwa kingeresa inaitua expression of interest. Na hakuna mutu anatoshana na hea pa Afrika. Hiyo inajulikana. Zina mna hiyo? Hakuna mutu amesaidia wa Afrika kushinda Raila. Si alikuwa high representative ya infrastructure katika EU. Nekatano. Akatawa barabara kutoka Kenya paka DRC ya mechora. Pesa inangonyewa tu ya kutengeneza. Lakini mimi nataka kusema hiyo isilete wa swasi yote. Yeye sasa mesafiri hameenda ulaya Na chama ni apachi kwa hapa Akirudi chama itakaa Kuna mkutane ya chama imeitishu akirudi Na mkutane ya chama itatoa mwelekeo Vile tutaenda Yodi ya ni chama kubwa Na raila aende EU Aende EU Aende Ecowas Aende Somalia Aende Ethiopia Yeye ndo badu atabaki kiongozi yetu hapa Kenya Tumelona Tumelona? Sasa wale wako na waswasi, sujui nini, sujui iyo wachana nae. Yule mzee ni mchoraji. Amechora kila kitu. That is just but one of the fears that the government machinery, including state house and NIS, have decided to propagate so that as people approach 2027, people must go there with a lot of fear and uncertainty. In this video, I want us to look at Three more propaganda that have been propagated by the government. And I want to demystify each and one of them. As we delve into this, if you're watching the video for the first time, please take a second or two and subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell to allow YouTube to notify you whenever we release a video like this. To all our supporters, I want to thank you in a very special way. I'm not taking that support for granted. So number one is the propaganda that ODM will disintegrate into pieces. The fact is, any time a de facto leader leaves an office, there is a moment of uncertainty as they try to look for someone who will take over. And like any other party, ODM will go through a point of uncertainty where they are trying to look for someone who will take over. But as the leaders are saying, Raila will still remain the de facto leader whether he clinches the seat at the African Union level 
or he doesn't, he will still remain a de facto leader. One thing that is very clear though is this. I have a feeling that if Raila becomes the AU chairman, the people who have been campaigning with Raila's name will have a problem. Because it is true that we've got leaders who do not have anything to show the people what they want to do. All they want to campaign with is Raila's name. Such kind of leaders will find it very difficult. And that is a fact, especially in Nyanza and in many of the Raila strongholds. But one thing that will certainly happen is that people will start scrutinizing the ODM leaders one by one. Because even as we speak, you know that we've got leaders who are elected under ODM and they've become rebellious. They're now working with the government. They went there pretending that they were going to look for development, something that has become very elusive. There isn't any development. And that is a rallying call. People have looked at them and they know that if Raila, should Raila steps aside, it will be upon the people to scrutinize their leaders one by one. But I will assure you, ODM will still remain very strong. It doesn't mean that it'll be, it will be devoid of some attempts from maybe the government side to try and infiltrate Nyanza like they did the other time when led by Obado and people like uh, Odoyo Widi. They, they, they kept on telling us that they were doing recruitment drives. Do you remember that when the new Secretary General of uh, UDA, Cleopas Malala, immediately he was installed there, he said that his next stop would be Nyanza to paint it yellow. But when Raila began the ODM recruitment drive, he neutralized everything. So ODM will remain strong, but those who will be campaigning will stand firm and tell what they want to do to the people. So the fear that ODM will be disintegrated is neither here nor there. I don't think it is true. Number two, there is this propaganda that is being led that Ruto is not beatable. In fact, they are saying that he defeated Raila Odinga with all the deep state. And so they are now saying that now he is in the power, he is the commander-in-chief of all the armed forces, he has got the sword, he is the head of government and head of state. And so they are saying that there is no way William Ruto can be beaten. But I want to tell you, if there is one leader who can be defeated very early, is William Samuel Ruto. You know, when William Ruto got to power, he had promised heaven. Today, William Ruto does not have an iota of a bragging right what he has done to the people. Just yesterday in Naivasha, you saw the, U the, the UDA member, members of parliament doubting him when he told them that there are jobs that have been, have been negotiated for, for 2,500 nurses to go and work in Saudi Arabia. And they were asking him, where are those jobs? It tells you that William Ruto is no longer trusted. If you run, you know, you, you look at William Ruto's promises against the whatever is implemented, you realize that he stands at only 5%. The Mama Bogas are crying. What were Boda Boda Wanalia Huku? Everyone. All the people that were deceived to sign a charter. They are now saying that they've realized that William Ruto is a liar, including the church. If we were to go for an election today, 90% of civil servants will vote against Ruto. Why? They are being deducted housing levy, despite the fact that the courts have ruled that this is illegal. And William Ruto goes ahead with it. You remember he was telling the members of parliament that we should not talk about the levy. Let us talk about the jobs that are about to, are about to be created. And so... William Ruto is the most vulnerable leader that can be defeated. And that is on a free, fair and verifiable election. I'm not talking of, of bungled elections where an IEBC chairman will declare you as a president despite the fact that we have dissenting views like it happened in 2022. So this kind of fear is meant to, to, to cause a lot of despondency so that as we approach 2027, some people will say, Akuna aja ku, ku vote let us just vote William Ruto because he has already taken it. Or, there's no need of going to vote, let us just stay at home because even if you vote, William Ruto will still be the president. That is what 
status machinery is doing. But contrary to that, many people understand that Kenyans are tired of William Ruto. You've seen the way people are heckling him everywhere he goes. You know, when William Ruto would camp was campaigning, you never imagined that at any one point people would come to heckle and boo William Ruto. But these are signs and symptoms that people are tired. And as we approach 2027, if there is one person who is who fears even the next election is William Samuel Ruto, he's not sure, including the, the, the Mount Kenya that voted for him. So that propaganda must be diluted as it comes. Number three, there is this propaganda that Kalonzo is weak. It is another orchestrated propaganda because the vector is pointing at the fact that should Raila steps aside, then the next person who will take that mantle is none other than Kalonzo Musyoka. But is Kalonzo really weak? You know, at this point, we need now to define what we mean by political weakness. Because if you ask me, I know Kalonzo is a, a passive kind of politician. He does not like rubbing shoulders the hard way. He's, he doesn't like controversial politics. The likes of Kalonzo, Mudavadi. Those are people who love soft kind of politics. But Kalonzo Muzioka supported Raila thrice. In 2013, 2017, 2022. In fact, in 2022, he was not even a running mate. This despite the fact that the government side has always tried even to lure him to cross the floor. The other day, Keshagwa told us that they begged Kalonzo Musyoka to even become a foreign affairs minister. They were even ready to give him the seat, that one of, of uh, Speaker of the Senate, because you know that the standard of the Speaker currently did not bring anything to Kenya Kwanzaa. But Kalonzo has refused. I have always opined on this channel that if you look at ODM and Jubilee, their members have gone to state house, taken photos, people like Sabina Chege and Jalang, under the guise of looking for development. There isn't any member of WIPA who has gone to state house saying that they want, you know, development. That support base is intact, about 2,000, about 2 million votes or three, two to three million votes that Kalonzo has. So Kalonzo is not a weak candidate. If Kalonzo was weak, he would have joined the government because the government is dishing a, a lot of money. They would have created a position for Kalonzo Musioka, but Kalonzo has remained very firm. So this notion that Kalonzo is weak is neither here nor there. It is a propaganda from the government. And the, the, the ODM and the Zimu supporters must understand that the government will not rest until they swallow this propaganda. But I'm happy William Ruto himself said that we have a shortage of fools in the country. So people know exactly why the government fears Kalonzo Musioka. Because they are saying this, they understand that when Raila is not campaigning, when Raila is not contesting as a president, there will be no any propaganda because anytime Raila contests, Raila is a scarecrow. They would go to Mount Kenya and spread a lot of, you know, they malign him. Because they know that anytime Raila contests, Mount Kenya will not vote for him. But with Kalonzo, there isn't any historical background that they will present. In fact, the only thing that can be said about Kalonzo is that in 2007, when the elections were contested fiercely and people were fighting, Kalonzo rushed to help Kibaki form the government. A government that they have said Raila fought so hard. So Kalonzo is safe and we must allay all these fears. The last propaganda that is being propagated by the state machinery is Lewis cannot vote for any other candidate apart from Raila. Is it true? You know, this has been demonstrated, especially in 202 when Raila said Kibaki Tosha. And they voted to the last man. They wanted change. It is true that they listened to Raila. Like Mbadi was saying there, that Raila is their leader when he says left, people will go left. When he says right, people will go right. Many of Raila's supporters are saying that the only person who they owe some political debt 
is Kanozo Musioka. I know that when Raila leaves, he shall have left a big gap. They will, it, we will really look for someone to fit into those shoes. But you see, not everyone is equal. Everyone has got some weaknesses and strengths. And I know there will be a big gap. For example, if he goes away, no one will be able to tell us the dossier, the government is stealing and all this. But one thing that we must understand is that people like Kalonzo were playing second fiddle because Raila was there. Once Raila goes, Kalonzo will sprout. And if Raila says that their candidate is Kalonzo Musioka, I can assure you, and you can take this to the bank, that they will vote for Kalonzo. So this notion that they can never vote for anyone apart from Raila is wrong. If they can only vote for Raila, then why is Ruto trying to get inroads in Nyanza? Because Ruto is not Raila. If he so believes that they can only vote for Raila, then why, why is he fighting to campaign to recruit members in the UDA? So this tells you that all this is propaganda. From where you sit, which any other propaganda have you seen the government come up with? Please share with you in the comment section.